Hi everyone, welcome to this video lecture for module 010 Basic Level on Introduction to Geographic Information Systems, GIS. I am Jose Gutierrez from our university. I hope you enjoy this video. First of all, the outline of our lecture is we are going to talk about what GIS is, then we are going to talk about geography and information systems, then we are going to talk about GIS data, and in the end the big deal, the relation between GIS and network planning. So let's start. What is GIS? Obviously, it's the combination between geography and information systems. And I'm sure that all of you know what geography is, but formally defined, geography is a science dealing with physical, biological and cultural features of the Earth, surface, people, climate, natural resources, etc. And then information systems. Probably most of you have dealt with information systems in the past, in your education. But again, formally defined, Information systems are any set of data, computer equipment, software, humans, or subsystems for storage, manipulation, management, movement, control, or display of data. So in the end, it's a lot of elements with the focus of manipulating data. And the goal is to move from that data to information, and later to move to knowledge. So, let's see now an example of the parts of uh, GIS. First of all, we have the data, and the data is the most important part of GIS. Without the data, we cannot do anything. Then we have the software, all the tools that we use to visualize and to process the data. Then we have the hardware, it's the machines where we run our tools, but it's also the servers where we store our data. Then we have the people, it's a very important part of GIS, because we cannot only rely on machines, we need people to interpret what we are seeing on GIS. And then finally, we have dedicated functions, so scripts that we program in order to perform a concrete operation over GIS. Now, in relation to the basics of GIS data, first of all, the starting point for GIS data is that we have it integrated in database management systems and we have our data stored in tables. We have two types of data, we have spatial data and we have attribute data. Spatial data is related to the geographical location of elements, elements that can be points, segments, regions, and then we have the attribute data that actually is telling us about characteristics of each of the special elements. Here we have an example of how we represent households into geographic information systems. In this case, we use points. Obviously, those points, they have a special information which could be Cartesian coordinates representing their X and Y coordinates. But also, we can go to a third dimension and talk about the altitude where those houses are located. In addition, we have the attribute data that could talk about the type of building we have, the number of people living in that building, the income of the family living in that building, and so on. Another example of GIS data could be the streets or the roads. Of course, we will have some special data, which could be the information about the coordinates of the two ending points of the segment, but also we can have the attribute data, which could be the name of the street, the direction the traffic is following in that street, and also the type of road we are talking about. Now let's see what the difference between data, information, and knowledge is. Data, they're symbols. They're raw facts that they don't really have any meaning. They could be numbers, they could be words, but we don't really know how to use them. But now, if we transform that data into information, then we're starting to understand what that data means. So we will get meaningful answers to questions like who, what, where, and when. And then once we have the information, we can move one step higher and then go to knowledge. And then actually, how can we apply that information to obtain some benefit and to answer questions such as why and how. Our goal with GIS, with Geographic Information Systems, is to get that raw data into knowledge. I know that this may seem a little bit absurd, so we can take a look at a concrete example. First of all, we have data, like it could be 
blood pressure values of tons of measurements to tons of patients. They are just raw values, we don't really know anything about them. And we want to move to the next level. And then we have information. Well, if the value of those measurements is higher than a certain threshold, then we know that a patient has high pressure. And now, what do we do with that information? We want to extract some knowledge. We want to know what is going on. And then we can say that a patient with high pressure could be due to bad eating habits. And that is what it's all about with data, information and knowledge. I hope it is clear now. Now, finally, let's see the relation between GIS and network planning. I hope by now you understand that part of network planning is related to how to physically build networks. And to do that, we need information about where the physical elements are located. For example, we need to know where our users are located so we need information about the households that would be the endpoint of our network. We need information about the streets that we will use to deploy our fiber tools. We need to know where the bridges are. We need to know about where the metropolitan areas are. So to make a consistent network planning design, we need all that data and we need to convert it into information and then start some knowledge. So for that, we can use automatic tools, we can use digital tools, running in computers to make our life much easier. In the old times, this used to be done by hand, but now we can take advantage of all the IT equipment that we have, all the research into algorithms, and then we can make more automatic processes to do network planning. But just remember, this will not solve all the problems. We still need people, we still need humans to make decisions into network planning. So I hope you understand this. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed. Now you can proceed with the assignment that I put in Moodle. See you!